so I, as a bunch of you might know, and some of you might not, I also work with Bus Stop Films as well as working with Remarkable. And Emily, as long with being a producer and a writer and an actor and a disability advocate, somehow squeezes in being one of our board members and she's just phenomenal. And um, so we made, the, that film was created in, in March of this year, I believe, was when it was officially done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so really quick turnaround to make something so brilliant. But um, mm -hmm. and I guess the first question, and, and I encourage all of um, all the audience out there, uh, any questions you want to ask, just chuck it in the um, chat and I'll, I'll hopefully get to it. But I guess I'd like to ask, you know, I, I've mentioned that you are a producer and a writer and an actor, and you also have a, a history of um, being a disability advocate. And mm -hmm. how is it being able to combine your artistic practice with your advocacy work? Yeah, look, so I come originally from a theatre background, but I, you know, a community theatre background, but I work a lot in both theatre and screen. Um, and the way that I would describe my work is that it's about expanding perceptions and, you know, working on social justice, not just about disability, but about all sorts of other issues. Um, and that's not to say that's all I do. And, you know, not just disability again, but it is a very strong undercurrent in my work because I think that storytelling kind of has the power to change people's hearts and change people's minds. And, you know, I think hopefully Groundhog Night is a really good example of that. Um, Brilliant. And yeah, so it is just about combining those two things, I think. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and I guess, um, what Groundhog Night does um, particularly well is that it weaves these moments of incredible humour and then it kind of quickly kind of pulls a rug out from everybody and gives a really sincere moment to, to communicate a really powerful message about um, ableism and about um, inclusiveness. And, and do you find that you draw on a lot of your personal experience or experiences that, that have been shared with you to create these stories? Yeah, I do. I think as an artist, it's my job to reveal my truth in a way that, you know, connects with others and encourages others to connect with theirs. So in that way, I think the best stories come from a place of emotional truth. And that's not to say that everything that you see in my work is something that's happened to me or you know that the characters are based on real life people um but i think the magic of creativity is to take that um emotional truth and build on it so again groundhog night is an example of that because you see some of the experiences that I've had in my, you know, wonderful, crazy life. It, it, you know, I think it really builds on the love that I have for my family. And, and it's, that's why I think authenticity and representation is really important because, again, of that emotional truth aspect yeah for sure um and i guess uh like thinking about that note of creativity we see it in storytelling and and we also see that um creativeness in the startup community and i we kind of can't go without acknowledging that that brilliant synchronicity in the script where you talk uh your, your sister isabel mentions that she's started a range of um sex toys that are also uh accessible and then we look at the work that one of our Sid 20 startups are doing called Handy. And, and they're also making the world's first range of sex toys for people living with uh, hand, yeah, uh, limited or hand impairments. Um, yeah. And I do, do you just kind of love 
seeing that that storytelling in the film industry is becoming a lot more inclusive as well as technology is 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 on the same trajectory look i really do and i think if i could talk to the work that hand is doing for a moment i think that people with disabilities are so often um thought of as these asexual aromantic things that don't have relationships or sex lives or anything like that and i think um you know something like handy proves that that's just patently false and you know it is really great to see startups in general making things more accessible and i think the film industry is is doing that as well so okay and so i would we've got a um a question here and and how was it uh, when you were making the film how was it working with australian actors like robin nevin and chris hayward oh my goodness <laughs> um what i it was it was incredible it was beyond my wildest dreams sort of incredible um it what i will say is that it really made me want to be as good as i possibly could be at my job because i'm going to tell you you don't want to be the weakest link in a class like that like because it will show you know so it really made me um bring you know bring the best that i could to to the role in the story and you would have been fantastic regardless of their presence so <laughs> want to make well, that very clear <laughs> thank you very much um, um, well that's great i guess if we we i don't think we have any other questions and that might be kind of near the end of the q a session unless anyone has anything else um if not em thank you so much for letting us share the film it was brilliant i get excited um, to watch it every time and a big round of applause a virtual one you are an absolute sensational human and we're very lucky to have you within our community um, and i hope remarkable sees a lot more of you bus stop will definitely have you there always <laughs> but thank you thank you so much